Emery Tate's five most brilliant moves. Over the span of Tate's 30-year chess career, he produced some of the most beautiful games the world has ever seen. He was known for his attacking and ruthless style of chess. I've picked out five moves in which I believe are the ultimate testament to his creative genius reputation. I hope you enjoy. first brilliant move I'm going to show you comes from a game between Emery Tate with the white pieces and with the black pieces, a very formidable opponent, Leonid Yudison. Leonid Yudison, at the peak of his powers, was rated 8th in the world in 1991, which is an incredible achievement and is one of Israel's best chess players of all time. And watch how Tate absolutely crushes him. Henry Tate has just played b4, kicking this knight away. Leonid Yudison now goes knight a4. So, as you can see, he is threatening this knight, and also he has discovered an attack on the queen. As you see now, the queen is attacking this knight. If he simply just takes this knight with either piece, then Leonid Yudison will take this knight, and it will be a fair exchange. So, Emery Tate in this position plays the incredible move, knight f5. Now, when I first saw this move, I did not know what to think. I'd never actually, I've never seen a move like this. I've looked at lots of patterns. I've looked over, I've looked over 3,000 chess patterns. And I've never actually seen a chess pattern like this. So, what's the idea here? This was played in the game, but if this was not taken... And say Leonard Yudison just plays a normal move like he defends his bishop with like rook e8. Then after take, take, we can simply win this and we're up material. So let's see what happens if this knight was taken. And it was taken. So in the game, this was taken. Here Emery Tate does not take back, but he goes knight d5. Queen d8 was played. And now e5. See, now Emery Tate has these very nice pawns. They control the f6 square. And they're marching towards black's king. But rook e8 is played. Here Tate plays queen h5. Knight a to b6 is played. Anyway, Tate ended up winning this game in an absolutely amazing style. And there's, way, there's lots of more moves in this game. More absolutely amazing. But anyway, after Queen H6, his opponent resigned because there was too many threats of threats of promoting this pawn. There was threats of checkmate in one. It was just all over. Um, the threat of Queen G7 was way too strong. So for that reason, um, his opponent resigned. So that's the first one. The next game, Tate's got the white pieces and his opponent, Alexander Shapalov, a four-time United States chess champion. What is absolutely insane. And also... At Shapalov's peak in 1998, he was rated 29th in the world. I put a lot of emphasis on the quality of Tate's opponent for these moves. Because these moves are very good, but it's, a, it's the Tate's opponent what just really makes it special. So I put a lot of emphasis on that. And these moves also are just absolutely brilliant. And this next one will blow your mind. So here, uh, Alexander Shapalov has played King G8. Tate now plays knight c6, attacking this queen. Makes sense. As you can see, Tate's got quite a deadly position. He's down a pawn, but Tate's always down a pawn. But that doesn't matter because, you know, normally down a pawn, more files. That's how we like to play. Now, after knight c6, Shapalov needs to get his queen out of dodge. So he goes queen e1, check. Rook f1 is played. And now queen e6, looking to exchange queens. You should know that you should never try and exchange queens with a very attacking chess player. So here you can try pause the video and find Tate's brilliant chess move. So hopefully you did pause the video and hopefully you did find it. If you did, give yourself a pat on the back because Rook F7 is played. After this move, his opponent, four time United States chess champion resigns. What happens if you take the queen here? If you take the queen, we have an absolutely beautiful checkmate. We go knight e7 checkmate. For people who play chess, obviously the kind of dream checkmate is always with a knight. We're always looking for that kind of smothered mate or a checkmate with the knight. It's kind of just the holy grail of checkmates. So there's nothing really Tate's opponent can do because he has to get off this rank and he has to defend this square. So there's no way for him to really defend this square without his queen getting attacked or just hanging his queen. Say he tries like knight c8 or just fails anyway to knight e7 again. 
And if also, if this is taken, then we can simply just take. And after takes, we can simply go knight e5 because there's pins. And we'll pick up this knight as well. Notice how there's no knight d6 to defend this knight because we simply just take. And checkmate will follow very soon. So that was the second brilliant move. So the third game comes with Emery Tate with the white pieces and his opponent, Verujan Okobian. He is the highest rated player in this whole thing so far. And he is an extremely formidable opponent. He had a peak rating of 1645. In 2016, he was in the top 150 in the world. I just want to say in 2016, there was absolute monsters in the top 100. I promise you, if you look through it, it's just full of monsters. So 2016 was some of the best chess was some of the best chess players to ever live were in that era. So anyway, so the move is great, but if we can just appreciate how Emery Tate has absolutely outplayed Verujan Okobian. As you can see here, white is definitely better because he has way more space here. He has way more mobility with his pieces. He has way more options. This king's weak. It's not, can't castle. It's just moved from f8 to e8. This pawn structure is weak. So this, this position is not very good. And for Emery Tate to really get a position like this against such a strong grandmaster is just so, so amazing. Anyway, we'll see how Emery Tate just finishes him off. So, Rook Bishop C1 is played here. Very nice. And now, now pay attention to this move, Bishop C1. Because it has a very deadly idea. Queen A5, and now Rook G3. Attacking this. Uh, we're hitting this. And um, as you can see, this king is no longer defending this pawn. So, this really just needs to be attended to. So, black here goes, plays the ugly move, Bishop F8, defending this. But here, Emery Tate doesn't care. He sacrifices his bishop. Yep, the computer definitely thinks it's brilliant as well. Now, Tate punishes. He's an extremely strong opponent for taking this. He goes knight f6, check. And this king is forced here. No other squares. Notice how his knight uh, covers all these squares. This is force. And here, Tate plays knight g4. If this king comes here, then we can simply go here. And we can win, up, win more bishops. We win this. This is extremely deadly. And also, if this also comes here, we can also go here, and after, and we're hitting this, and say if you wanted to try to defend this, after that we could simply go, we'll move like rookie free, and we're threatening loads of discoveries, and this is just absolutely deadly. So, for that reason, after this, after this, the knight is, the king is pretty much forced back here, that doesn't really help, because rook e3, he doesn't even take this pawn, he just goes rook e3, Hitting this, there's no really convenient way for uh, Black to defend this. So after that, uh, his opponent goes King D7, trying to get the King out of dodge. Uh, knight E5, check, and now King C7. And after Knight F7, Emery Tate has regained his material, and he goes on to win this game in beautiful style. But if we just look at it again, it all started from this sneaky little maneuver back here of playing Bishop C1 and beautiful sacrifice. And very nice stuff against a very strong opponent. And now the next move is definitely the craziest and my, in my opinion the most brilliant move of this whole video. It's insane. His opponent is Specky Einst, a Dutch Grandmaster uh, whose peak of his powers were rated 2606 in 2012. What would have put him in the top 150 in the world? Absolutely unbelievable. Tate's got the black pieces. Playing with the black pieces, you normally don't really win at the top level. It's normally a draw. Um, or you lose, but sometimes you do win, it's not always like that, but normally with black, you're normally playing for a draw at the very, very top level. So this makes this even more incredible. So here his opponent goes knight g3. As you can see, Tate here got some nice pawns up here. Um, I mean, his position's a bit cramped, but the next move he plays <laughs> is, you just have to see. Here Tate plays rook f4. And now, first of all, if this is, like, not taken, say, like, rook a, say, like, rook a1, then we can take this, and say it takes, and we can fork the queen and the king. Um, so, basically, what we're doing is that we're targeting this pawn. So, but, I mean, we are giving up a rook. What happens if takes? So, after takes, uh, we take now. Now, we hit this knight, we hit this pawn, and this bishop becomes absolutely alive. What a brilliant move. Just opens up the whole board. Um, and now after knight e2, Tate plays knight e5, getting his knight in a lovely square. Uh, king uh, 
D1 uh, was played. Um, King C2, the king's just running. Take here now, blast open with B4. If this is taken, then we can go here and trap the bishop. So after that, um, king, king B3, we push. Tate exchanges queens, and he has a very nice conversion because he opens up the game, and the rest is very nice. And it's just it's maybe one of my favorite moves of the whole thing. And anyway, after bishop d7 here, his opponent resigned because his pawn is promoting. The final fifth one, I've tried to come up with something very special. It's almost a double brilliant move. It's absolutely insane. But before, if you have enjoyed this video so far, please subscribe and like up because this video has taken me a very long time to make. So I really appreciate it. And hopefully you're enjoying it so far. And let's get into the final one. So with the black pieces, we've got Emery Tate. And now I've already told you about black pieces. It's already a slight disadvantage. You're normally playing for a draw, especially when you're playing against Nick DeFerman with the white pieces, a free time United States chess champion and tied for first place with Larry Christensen. But Larry Christensen won in the playoffs. So he would have been a four time United States chess champion. It was absolutely insane. That's such a big accomplishment. And also he was rated 87th in the world in 1999. So he's playing against a very decorated chess player. In this position, um, bishop d3 has been played. And here Tate, down the port like always, has played queen g3 check. And now king h1. Here he, Tate plays a very good move with h3. Because after rook g1, Tate plays a brilliant move here. You can try pause the video and find the final brilliant move. If you did pause it and find it, it is queen g2 after Tate takes takes rook h1 was played here take one a rook he's got very nice pieces here he's also got a very very deadly pass pawn notice how he's given up two rooks for the queen but this pass pawn is this pass pawn is almost worth a queen not really down much material here his opponent goes knight d1 i'll skip a bit uh take maneuvers very well because I so here after bishop e3 you could try pause the video and find the other move and just finish it off. Brilliant move after brilliant move. It is rook g1. After this, Tate plays knight h3. And after king h2, his opponent, a very decorated grandmaster, resigns. Because the problem is queen g1 is mate. So his opponent didn't let him get the checkmate. You know it happens. But uh, Tate anyway destroyed a very, very strong grandmaster. Was sacrificing his queen. And another exchange sacrifice absolutely amazing stuff so that's the end of this video now and i really appreciate your time and attention for sticking with me for this whole video let me know in the comments what you thought of this video do you want to see more emery tate content yes or no uh, if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe as it'd be much appreciated and have a good rest of your day